Hello everyone, this is Jason Mutlak from StellarMate. In this video, we'll be talking about ECOS Focus Modular. So this is the module you want to use if you want to get uh, pinpoint nice round stars. So the GUI itself is composed into three major parts. The first one is we have the focus or controls themselves. Then we have the CCD and filter wheel controls. And then finally here on the left hand side, we have the settings which are the settings that we apply to the autofocus process. On the left-hand side here, we have two sections. One is the preview section right here. And below here, we have the V-curve, which we are going to talk about shortly. So the basic premise of the autofocus module in ECOS is that it captures a star field. It measures what we call H of R, or half flux radius which is a numerical measurement of how good the focus is. It basically calculates the uh, flux uh, away from the center and waits until we are almost at half the flux and then measure the radius in pixels. There is another measurement in other programs uh, like the FWHM, but the HFR values are usually uh, more tolerant to seeing conditions and our overall a more reliable uh, measure mark or meter for your autofocus position. So here you will be working mostly in two modes. When you first use it, like in the field or the first time you use a focus modulo, you will be most likely away from your optimal focus point. So how do you know how to get to like the optimal focus point, not the perfect focus point, because that's variable and can change throughout the night. But you cannot start autofocus immediately while you're really, really far away from the optimal focus point. So the first thing you probably want to do is you want to do framing where you capture continuous measurements of your, your frame and then you can just judge visually if you have good stars or not. So let's do that. Usually you want to pin four by four because on many cameras, pinning one by one takes a long time. I'll leave here the exposure to one. The filter is to luminance. And yeah, that's it. And then I will click fr framing here. So now it will start taking continuous exposures and showing it to the preview panel here. Here we have the controls that focus in and focus out. And if you have a, an absolute focuser, which you should have, then here you can set the number of ticks. So now here we started to getting the frames and you can zoom in and uh, zoom out and pan and do all of these uh, fancy stuff within here. And here we can see the stars and they're, they're pretty appear that we're quite a bit out of focus. So then you can start um, specifying the step size here. It's by default 100. And then you can like say, let's say let's focus in and then, you know, visually judge if we are you know, far away or, or uh, not. And uh, you can increase this value, let's say for example, 500. And let's focus in. And then here we can see actually that the, uh, the focus is becoming better. So you can, let's, as, as, as long as you have some resolved stars, you can let the focus module takes care of the rest uh, so let's do that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uncheck the auto star select because I want to see which star it selects. Usually when it's out of focus, uh, the selection algorithm, the detection algorithm gives many false positives. So uh, it's better not to let it auto select stars and you select the stars yourself. But once you're really close to the optimal uh, focus point uh, or, or the, the you know the critical focus zone then you can let it select the star for binning uh, never use 4 by 4 or 2 by 2 in the actual autofocus operation always use 1 by 1 you don't want your stars to be saturated as you focus and so that's that's pretty much it let me just um, capture an image Let me uh, zoom in here. And my camera takes about um, 
20 to 30 seconds to download. So this is going to take uh, quite a bit. Okay. Here we have here we have the frame and we can see that it uh, it auto detected as one star here and not very well even sometimes it gets and see here it detects as random noise so let's select some star here uh, something that it's not overly saturated actually this is a good star right here so let's just click on that and you can see it it gives you in the tooltip the HFR value so now it's it's subframed on the star and and now your one by one bent frame is going to be fast to download because you subframed. So now with this, let's let's uh, start the autofocus process. Before we do that, let's go over some settings. So the maximum travel size is um, is how how many ticks you want it to go at maximum. Since this is our first rough focusing, I'm just going to increase this to like a large margin, like say. Um, 10,000. So I'll allow it to move 10,000 in either direction from the current value of almost uh, 57,000 here, 56,900. Uh, the step size, okay, sure, I'll let it large because we are really out of focus right now, like awfully out of focus. Uh, the number of frames here, like if you really, really have awful scene conditions, you can increase the number of frames so that the HFR value is actually average. Uh, now it's like 4.45, and if you make it two frames, it will take two measurements and combine this as one measurement. For the algorithm, I don't recommend you change this value. You have two algorithms. The polynomial algorithm usually can find solutions faster than the iterative, purely iterative method. The detection um, algorithm, this is the what's used to detect the actual star, like to draw the red circle here. So uh, the default value of gradient is usually good for most conditions, but you can play around with these settings and use, uh, we have like SIP is a new algorithm. Um, in my case, in my camera and my scene conditions, I usually just stick to gradient. Okay, uh, one more setting here. Uh, if, you, if you actually choose, click full field, it's not gonna subframe, it's gonna measure every single star in the frame and it will average all of those. So it's, it's, it, it can be more reliable, but it's also, it's gonna be pretty slow. So uh, in my case, I don't really use full field. For suspend guiding, I use it when uh, I'm using, um, uh, like my guiding is active and my guiding is affected by my focus operation because I guide on the same telescope through an OEG. So whenever I change the focus, the guiding is actually affected and um, since I don't want the guiding to go crazy, I usually suspend guiding until I'm done with the focusing. All right, so let's go ahead and start now. So let's click go to focus. And here we can see the V curve and we can see the absolute position versus HFR. And here we got the, the initial HFR value. And now it will iterate and you know move to find optimal here we can see the beginning of the curve it's going to the left hand side and we can see the value is dropping now hfr is 3.7 now it dropped even further more 2.21 1.47 okay yeah it's still going down we're really we're really away from the focus point but see you can see here now it started to go up again so this area here this is our like optimal focus point and now it will go back and forth until it calculates the optimal focus position and there we go and now it finished after 10 iterations now this is by no means perfect because we started from a really rough position away so now that you find your sort of like your 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 okay go zone here then now you can um, change your travel, maximum travel, let's say like to 3000 ticks or even less than that. Your steps now should be around like 50 or 25. It really depends on your, your telescope and uh, your focuser, but usually around these small values, 25, 50 or even less. And now you can run another focus uh, operation just to make sure that you are okay. So, um, 
there is nothing to be done just click autofocus and it will restart again and it will check if it can improve this focus uh, operation uh, another tip is that don't use a really bright star something like a fourth magnitude star 3.5 4.5 is is, um, is is usually good enough uh, the mount should be tracking as um, as i have it right now okay after six iterations and uh, we have uh, we achieve our focus point now if you go to the um, your capture modulo you can see that the hfr value here is uh, 0.79 but it added some some extra uh, weight to it and it made it 1.05 so if you perform in sequence focusing it will make sure that the hfr value uh, stays below this at all times okay uh, let's see if there is anything else to talk about uh, in case you can't really see any stars you can add an effect here like auto stretch and high contrast but never use any of these effects during the actual autofocus operation because they will ruin your image uh, when you made a mistake in the subframing and you want to go back to your original image just click reset and now we can go back if we click capture again and let's do it this time four by four if you click capture again then it will uh, capture the full frame again there we go and here we have like a much nicer uh, round and uh, focused stars in this frame okay I think uh, that's pretty much it uh, this, the focus modulo is is uh, not quite complex like the other modulos in, in, in ECOS um, you can find more information in the like a relative profile if you have this shape like a Christmas tree type shape this means you achieved good uh, focus position okay uh, thanks uh, folks for watching and uh, happy hunting with your equipment and clear skies